Hey. Percy, is there anything that you wanted to go over before we started the, or before I introduced the Tufts people? No, uh, I was just waiting for a, a kind of a warm people to enter. So I think we're there. Uh, take it away, Gina. Okay, awesome. Um, hello, everyone. So today we have the Tufts University students here to present their capstone project. I just want to give a quick intro if you haven't heard what this project was about. Um, we, the UX team was able to sponsor their class, the Capstone Project. It's a, it's a class for senior level students. And they meet up with certain industry level sponsors, um, like companies like us and other companies, and carry out a project. We give them a problem, and then they're able to go through the whole kind of design process uh, for their spring semester. So um, I've linked our specific project that they're working on in the agenda, and then they will present uh, their presentation and then the resources are linked there as well. Um, Melinda, is everyone here to present? Yes, I think we're ready to go. Um, I can share the slides if that works. Yeah, go for it. Wonderful. So thank you all for um, letting us, you know, take the time today um, out of your weekly meeting. We're really appreciative um, of having this opportunity. I don't think all of the capstone groups that we worked um, alongside had this opportunity. So we really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, as Gina said, this is our capstone project for our engineering psychology major. Um, all of the ma majors students have to go through this project and well, not this project specifically, but this course um, to basically show what we've learned so far. And we got the opportunity to obviously work with GitLab. Um, which has been really amazing. So we wanted to first shout out Gina and Ben. And Gina is a Tufts alumni of the program that we're doing. So it's been really amazing to um, have this support throughout the semester. Um, so we specifically worked on the CICD onboarding. Oh, sorry, to introduce ourselves first. That's kind of important. Um, so yeah, I'm Melinda Fern. I'm the project manager for our group. Um, we're all engineering psychology majors, and I specifically have a minor also in studio art. I've had past experience um, working with a few other companies, and most recently, I was a design UX design intern at PwC Digital, where I'll be working in September. Um, Emmeline, if you want to introduce yourself first. Sure. Um... Hi everyone, I'm Emmeline Myers and I was a UX researcher and I did a lot of technical writing for this project. Um, I'm also majoring in engineering psychology and minoring in computer science and studio art. 
Hey everyone, I'm Alex. I worked on the designs and the research for this project. I'm studying engineering psychology as well with a minor in entrepreneurship. A uh, fun fact about myself is I love competitive gaming and I used to be a professional um, Overwatch player, but yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Claudia. I worked as a UX designer and researcher on this project. I am double majoring in engineering psychology and computer science. Uh, there are a lot of things in the past in school, but um, my work experience has been as a software engineer in Akamai last summer, and I'm going to be working full time also as a software engineer in Gated Design Systems um, from in July. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Kalissa Sana. I'm also an engineering psychology major, um, and I'm minoring in studio art. Um, I have some experience as a UX design and research intern with Carrier. Um, and I'm planning to return there to work full time after graduating. And yeah, I helped with the UX designs and some of the research for this project. Awesome. So yeah, that's our team. We were really lucky to work together and with GetLab specifically. And um, Gina and Ben gave us the task of looking more into the CICD onboarding at GitLab. So I know this is the UX department, and it took us a second to get to know what um, CICD is, so I was just going to review that for everyone, just in case. Um, CICD is continuous integration and deployment, and it basically allows developers to automate the testing and deployment of code into production. So GitLab provides templates to support this process that can really make it a lot easier since it's so complex. Um, so obviously, because it's so complex, this does provide some issues. So many users find that GitLab CI/CD onboarding process was difficult due to the complexity of some of these concepts. So our goal for the semester was to create a prototype of how to ease this process for new GitLab users, specifically users who have professional coding background with CI/CD. Um, so now we're going to walk you through some of the research we did um, to just get a little more background on this issue and hopefully come to a solution. Great. Yeah, I'll kick us off with the discovery research section. Um, so going into this, we had kind of three main goals. And as Melinda already touched on, we needed to understand what CICD was, especially because most of us had no experience or I myself had never even heard of it. So kind of getting our bearings and a baseline understanding before moving forward was critical. Um, our second goal was understanding our target users. Since none of us quite fit the description of our target users, understanding their needs and how they use CICD and how they would interact with GitLab was important for us to understand. And third, identifying problems within the onboarding experience. This was the overall purpose of our project, but this was especially important um, given the short timeline of this entire project, uh, finding a couple key pain points and areas for uh, opportunity and growth um, and improvements um, would be really great because then we could scope our project from early on. Can you click the next slide? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, we conducted a resource review at the start of the semester. Then we looked at some of our competitors, GitLab's competitors, and we were looking at uh, platforms that also had CICD functionality. So looking at how they onboard their users, what methods and strategies they use. We also did a comparative analysis, which was looking at other companies who maybe are not necessarily software related or CICD related, um, but we could still learn from how they onboard their users as well. And then we did a usability test, um, testing the existing onboarding experience that GitLab has for CICD. And this was really great because when we later in the semester, we're going to test our, our new designs, we had a baseline um, to compare it to. So after doing some initial research, we felt like we were ready to start building some personas. Um, we have two here for examples. We have Sam Startup and Devin DevOps. Sam Startup, as the name implies, is a startup founder. Um, and this, this person might not have a lot of resources, maybe not a lot of money since they're just getting their company started. So they're relying on open source platforms, free platforms um, like GitLab to get themselves up and running. And then Devin DevOps, a more seasoned um, DevOps engineer who uses platforms like GitLab routinely in their work. From there, we were able to dive deeper into building empathy maps. So trying to get a sense of 
um, beyond just facts. You know, what does this person see, hear, do in a day? How do they feel? Um, things like that. Uh, we made a journey map of the onboarding experience, and this was mostly influenced by that initial usability test I mentioned with the existing process. So we were able to map out in phases what the user goes through and map out those high and low points. And from those low points, we identified them as room for growth, uh, areas for improvement um, that we would build upon um, later when, in our redesign. It, so as Calissa mentioned, part of our discovery research phase included an initial round of usability tests. These tests um, were run on the current product and the onboarding process for our target users, which we defined as developers who were familiar with CI/CD and had um, developed for CI/CD uh, DevOps purposes before, but had not used GitLab specifically. And our sponsors here at GitLab help us, helped us um, distribute a screening survey and recruit five participants who qualified as target users. But before that, we conducted a pilot test with a tough student who wasn't a target user as he had used GitLab before, but he helped us iron out our script and procedure. Um, each session had a leader and a note taker, and we used a test repository that was set up by our sponsors here. So users could test um, setting up the CI CD process, which included um, selecting a template, importing it, creating a quick task, running the pipeline, and then checking on the result. Um, we followed a script for this and we've had some interesting findings. First, we found that users assume that the visualized tab could also edit the pipeline and they tried to click on the nodes to open the yaml file to edit from there it was also difficult for users to find key links in the process such as browse templates button or um, the setup ci cd button and selecting a template proved to be unnecessarily difficult as users had to scroll through an alphabetized list which was kind of tough for people who didn't know what they were looking for or what GitLab had to offer. Um, it also took the users to a separate window where they weren't able to import directly and they had to copy paste. Also, finally, the navigation tabs were a bit confusing, especially on the left-hand sidebar menu. Users found that there was an abundance of tabs, which is a bit confusing. Um, and they had difficulty accessing the specific instance of the pipeline that was just run. So altogether, our discovery research uh, pointed to a few specific uh, pain points that we wanted to address in our solution. First, it was difficult to find important elements for the onboarding process. Um, and it was difficult to import and select a template. Um, users could do it, but it wasn't particularly intuitive having to go to the separate window and scroll through a list without any search features. Uh, finally, the sidebar navigation was a bit confusing and some users struggled to check on their pipeline right away. So given this, we adjusted our scope um, to specifically focus on designing and prototyping a solution for improving the template selection process, as well as improving navigation. Um, and then we also compiled a list of out of scope observations and recommendations for our sponsor. So this wasn't lost when we narrowed our scope. Finally, after all of this discovery research, this was a bit over halfway through the semester, we were able to finally begin ideating and prototyping a solution. So once we ironed out pain points, we divided and um, each, each group member uh, created a separate sketch of a proposed solution. Uh, this was specifically for the um, a revamped way to select a template. These are the nicest ones of the bunch of them. We were very rough with these uh, because we presented them to each other. Then from there, we discussed our concepts and the different features that they would entail. So then we were able to distill those into two separate um, ideas for wireframes. We ended up um, creating a solution which would bring up a drop-down style menu um, 
for selecting a template. And this would include a search feature and you could look at the recent template templates as well as suggested templates. And then you could click browse all to bring you some, to something similar to the current window that GitLab has. Uh, the second option was a pop-up style menu, which would offer a pop-up in the same window, which would have all of the templates, but with searching, um, sorting and filtering, filtering features. And you could select a template and directly import it. So these were rough wireframes that we presented to our classmates for feedback. Yeah, as Emma mentioned before, we came up with two different styles after converging back in our designs. So after that talk and the discussion, since we got the chance to present to our classmates during class one time, we came up with um, a more high fidelity designs. Here you can see like the template pop up and you can also see the, um, uh, these are two different versions that we came up with and we were able to show those to class. And after good feedback on that, we also decided to actually make prototypes out of those um, still images essentially. And we also decided to include a version of a prototype that actually tackled the challenge of navigation and um, making the tabs a little bit more confusing, uh, less confusing, a little bit less confusing for the users and more concise altogether. So here you can see um, some, we'll, sh we'll show you animations of this later, but you can see how we had like a button here that would actually go first into a drop in menu and then you would be able to click um, to get the pop up version. And you can see here how for the navigation, we came up with almost a little bit of a landing page first that would hopefully let the user see the current pipeline and see all the relevant information about that. So again, um, after the first usability test, we decided on those two. And once we had that ready to test, um, we went to more of an iteration phase. And with this, we were able to, again, thanks to our wonderful, wonderful sponsors, you guys, uh, we got more, eight more people to the usability test. And on top of this, we also, um, got the chance to give them a survey, I see a survey, um, to measure more um, quantitatively how users felt about our new designs. And we got ISC a score of 80.42, which is an A minus by your guys' metric, which was really great. Even though, because we didn't have that many participants, it's not super statistically significant. It's still very meaningful for us. And it's worth mentioning that the original interface had an overall score of 72.92, but of course you guys had more participants and overall like a bigger scope or you were testing more stuff than our narrow down scope. So yeah, overall, we just tested the ability to find a template for the pipeline. We tested just general navigation and being able to find all the features of the recent or the most recent deployed, deployed pipeline. So yeah, overall, our final takeaways were the fact that finding the templates was much easier with our new design. All the participants were able to complete the task in less than 10 seconds, which is great. Um, we also found that the wording and the sorting feature was a little bit confusing. Um, the way that we uh, had different ideas of what the words that we use would mean for the users. And the hierarchy of the new navigation page that we came up with, it also took a little bit of time to get used to for them. Yeah, so overall, the final takeaways that we can take from this um, last round of usability testing that we did was that the way that we came up to find the templates are super successful. Um, maybe we should just review um, suggested, popular, and recent as the keywords that we use for the sorting um, once we were in that uh, template pop-up. The landing page uh, for the navigation needs to be um, tuned to match the mental models of our users a little bit better. And also, um, in terms of what we're actually testing with, uh, the next prototype should have more interactions and more uh, happy paths. Um, we as designers kind of expected the users to go into this one direction. And when users were clicking on different buttons and different um, options that we didn't account for, um, that they just kept trying to like, or we didn't actually um, get that much insight from them because we didn't keep going through those paths. And overall, we think there's a lot of room for improvement that went beyond, beyond our onboarding scope, but um, we would love to give that feedback at the end. Yeah, moving on to our final designs, we incorporated the feedbacks received during our usability testing in order to produce a more coherent and streamlined design. And our team were able to come up with a prototype that showcases how a new user can quickly onboard in GitLab CICD by finding a new YAML template, previewing its contents, and quickly committing the changes that they needed. And here we have the original template browser layout where the users would have to click and open a new tab. And we found that this actually disrupted the user's workflow a little bit. So within our new design, we wanted to kind of reduce that um, by containing the template browser within the same page. 
And as you can see here with a drop down menu that has the option to expand into a, into a pop-up window, this, help, this helps the user quickly preview and select some of the most common languages um, the YAML templates have to offer, and then they can dive deeper if they need a specific template that they're looking for. And changing the template browser layout itself enabled users to focus on searching quickly for a template that they needed, which is the discovery we made through our user test as some users just went straight for the search bar instead of going for browsing templates. Um, but we believe that this will get them to their destination quicker. And with our design changes uh, within the, the YAML code page themselves, the user is able to instantly replace their YAML code with the selected template where they can resume work straight away rather than copy and pasting or downloading anything. As for our next steps and further suggestions based on our current process, I think the logical next step would be to uh, user test our final designs and reiterate upon them to see what else could be improved. But as we mentioned earlier, we believe that there are huge potentials uh, behind the visualize feature as a lot of users found that fun and interactive and could possibly create an opportunity to uh, provide information at a glance for the users. Um, and we have a little prototype here on the right that will showcase maybe a way we can quickly expand and um, just preview the contents of a, a job that's already existing. And lastly, we believe that it will be beneficial to redesign the navigation bar to decrease nesting navigation menus, as a lot of users gave the feedback that um, they're seeing things on the left that they don't know is relevant to what they're looking for right now, which kind of confuses them a little bit. Um, with that being said, Oh, and like sorry, just to jump in, we added this slide in um, because we wanted to share these pain points that we found throughout these tests that were out of our scope. And we wanted to make sure um, this was something that you had access to. Um, of course, due to like the limited time we had for this project, we weren't able to dive deeper into these um, problems, but maybe they can go on your backlog and be dealt with in the future. So we wanted to make sure you had this list um, and we'll share the slides after so anyone can, you know, look at this later. Cool. And yeah, with that being said, we would like to thank the GitLab team for giving us this opportunity to learn and uh, work in such a cool environment and especially Gina and Ben for guiding us along this project, being so responsive and being so helpful teaching us so much. Um, but yeah, we'd also like to thank the Tufts um, Engineering Psychology, Human Factors Department, uh, but more but more still GitLab. Thank you. And any questions? Looks like Emily has the first question. Yeah, um, I was curious during your solution validation, um, were you testing both of the design options that you'd come up with or just one? And if so, if you, if you were just testing one, how did you determine which one that you wanted to test? I think throughout our process, um, we got to kind of do an initial test with the two different options. And we found that like in order to give the user more, we kind of combine the two. So we put the drop down that led into the pop up um, and decided to go ahead and test with that, especially um, due to the limited time. It would have been harder to kind of get each participant to do the both prototypes. So we just decided to move forward with one. Makes sense. Um, also, this just a uh, note this is an awesome project. They did a great Thank job. You. Uh, Hayana, looks like yours is a read only, but uh, Ben, you have the next question. Yeah, awesome, awesome job, uh, team. Very, very pleased with how this all came out. Um, but I, I, I love asking this question. Um, what was one of the like more surprising or interesting things um, that came out of of the user feedback that you received? I think that. One thing I was personally surprised about um, is I had never conducted a user test with a target user for any of my projects before. And questions that we had put into the script that we, amongst ourselves, we were thinking, maybe this is trivial. I don't know whether we should ask them what recent means for like a sorting function it's so obvious, like, it, it, of course, it's just the recent templates. The little things in the words that we use had the most, um, 
like variation um, in user responses. So we couldn't take anything as solved or obvious, um, which we've been taught several times before, but I think seeing that happen within our test was really a learning moment for us. Yeah, I can jump in as well. Um, it was interesting. Uh, I had assumed that our users who had many years of experience, like seven, eight years, would have an easier time navigating um, GitLab, but because they had never used it and were only familiar and had years of experience using competitor products, they were their like mindset of what they expect things to happen were they were kind of fixed in the tools that they were used to. And users who were maybe newer or less experienced um, actually had an easier time because they didn't really have a concept of what it was supposed to be like yet. So I thought that was kind of a surprising thing. Yeah, those are both great. Thank you, guys. I have the next question. Um, what was the most challenging part to you when you were onboarding GitLab and CICD, since it was a, a fairly new um, area, right, for for the group? And why was that uh, the challenging? I can take this one. I think um, the most challenging part for me as someone who has just like two coding um, classes in the past, CICD was a concept that I knew nothing about. So it was really hard to get inside the mind of the user, which is so important when you're designing for like someone specific. So I think that was really the hardest part for me. Um, and I think a lot of us like understanding what the user wanted and even during the usability test, some of the questions or points that um, the users would bring up, like I did not know the answer to because I didn't know like the specific context of how they would be dealing with this. So that's something that we kept on learning throughout the semester um, more and more on how someone would use the product. Yeah, I can also add on to that actually. Um... I do have a little bit more experience uh, with some of like more the software engineering like production level uh, software that are being used. I did do a lot of um back in my other um, summer internship. I did do a lot of um, I don't know sending stuff not into production, but you know deploying things like that. And even for me, I realized that even though I do have um, understanding of how these tools are supposed to work and the kinds of things that they're useful for. Um, the meta level of being able to actually make those tools more accessible and actually make those tools make more sense. To me, that was like super interesting and not something that I had thought about before. Um, even like not even through like the software engineer eye or like the designer eye. So being able to think more about why these tools have these uh, features and the way they have them was like super challenging for me because I already thought I had an idea what they were for. But um, a lot of my preconceptions were um, changed or like I felt like I learned more about CICD overall through this. Yeah, and as someone who's kind of in the middle, I'm minoring in computer science and have done quite a bit of it for game development, but nothing at like a larger level of software engineering and product deployment. Um, I found it difficult even once we narrowed our scope and we had between the group members, a general understanding of CICD enough to improve the onboarding process in some ways, especially when it came to navigation, we realized that even though we had narrowed our scope, that it would inevitably impact um, users of all levels, not only like our target users, but like new users as they were actually using the product, the product in their day to day. So without being able to do like a contextual inquiry or really understanding what the day-to-day -day tasks of these developers look like, we weren't able to be um, totally confident in our solutions for navigation because we didn't know how they would pan out long-term for someone who's using it day-to-day. -day. Yeah, and um, I guess from my experience, I'm just thinking about the, uh, the part where I'm personally learning and onboarding into CICD in GitLab. I remember reading the tutorial, I think it was creating your first pipeline. And as a person who has, well, I, I've taken two CS classes as well, but um, no idea about CICD. I was reading it and I was like, okay, so you need a runner. What's a runner? I clicked that, it was a different link. And then it gave me a list of runners or whatever. And then it's like, if you don't have a runner, you need to install it on your local machine. And then I went to install it. And then I installed Git somehow. 
and then I went back to the tab from before and it said, oh, but we have runners online, so you don't need it. And I was like, wait, so what did I just do? And I think that tutorial part was the one, the, the part that threw me off the most, but yeah. Well, we're at time. Um, there are some very good questions after this in the agenda. So I don't know if Gina, you want to pass those over to the team. But before we officially run out of time, I want everyone to unmute and give some applause and cheering to this really great team. Y'all did such a good job. Great job. Yes. Well done. Well done. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate you all taking the time. Um, yeah, so we'll share the slides with Gina. Also, we have our LinkedIn's linked here if you want to connect with us and ask us any more questions. We'd be happy to help. Um, and we also attached like all of the things that we've worked on this semester. If you want to take a deeper dive, there's a lot. So <laughs> Great work. Thank you so well much. Well done. All right, everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye.